Luxury brands aren't what they used to be and we all know it. Back in the day, luxury was truly exclusive and opulent. I'm talking Marilyn Monroe level luxurious, you know? Classy, chic, bold, yet smooth. Whether it's the style or the quality, luxury just isn't as inspiring or intriguing as it once was, at least to me. Well, that's probably because when you step away from the sparkle that dazzles you, you start to see the facts that have been sitting right in front of you all along. I'm talking about how there's nothing truly luxurious or exclusive about today's luxury. I'm talking about how it means different things to the rich and the poor. And I'm talking about what really goes into making a bag that's absurdly priced at thousands of dollars. Alright, maybe we're diving in a bit fast, let's take it slow and break it down. When I was a teenager dreaming of owning my very first luxury bag, it never crossed my mind to question why I wanted one. I didn't stop to wonder why the price was set so high, somewhere completely out of my reach at the time. I just assumed that luxury items were worth every penny and that having a luxury bag would be the ultimate goal. That mindset stuck with me even after I finally got my first luxury bag. But then I decided to cut back on my spending because I was kinda out of control, met luxury brands and oh boy was that an eye opener. If you've been following my channel, you already know that I'm no saint when it comes to luxury shopping, but I can honestly say I'm working on getting better at it every single day. I'm a recovering addict. Anyway, while doing so, so I'm learning more about the luxury brands, their practices, what is true luxury, and more. To be honest, I used to convince myself that luxury goods were worth the price by reasoning that they offered superior quality. But when I gave a shot to mid-luxury brands such as Cos, Cezanne, Strathberry, and more, I was like, okay, this is getting interesting. Then I did some digging and realized that I wasn't alone in this. People were complaining about quality issues, like even professional stylists were saying that they used to be able to justify their spending on luxury items because the quality was top notch and now they have nothing to justify making purchases from luxury brands. So it's like luxury brands aren't actually a thing, not anymore, they're just overpriced brands that know how to craft a strong image and convince people to keep buying. They no longer offer style, quality, exclusivity, but do you know what they offer? I mean, they need to give you something. If they're not, then why are people so eager to get their hands on luxury items? What's the point? Social status. That's what it boils down to. Luxury items have become more about showing off wealth and status than enjoying craftsmanship, style, quality, or exclusivity. And for many, that's still enough to fuel the desire to own them. How sad. As social media's influence grows, people are more driven to look better, feel superior, and prove themselves. Yeah, proof seems like the right verb here. Otherwise, why would influencers pose in fake private jets, right? I feel like it's all an illusion at this point. It's not about the product, it's about how you perceive it. I mean, Louis Vuitton wasn't that cool until the rappers and influencers decided to wear it, am I right? It was a brand for a timeless class. People used to save money to get an LV bag because it was iconic. Now, it's all over the place. Another example is this. If you go out wearing clown shoes, people would be like, okay, weirdo, stay away from me. No, I'm not sporting wearing clown shoes in public, but hear me out. If you wear an Alaska fur booty, it's cool and trendy and edgy and stylish because it's Balenciaga, you guys. Of course, it's better than the clown shoes. Not really, though. Okay, my disdain for Balenciaga took over for a second there, but honestly, what can I do? I'm still trying to recover from this horrifying bag. Sometimes it feels like these brands have become a huge joke in the industry and honestly, it's on us for not calling them out or humbling them enough. As if that's not enough, I find it absolutely ridiculous to become a walking billboard for these brands. I mean, you expect me to hand over a ton of money and in return, I'm supposed to walk around with your initials and monogram splashed all over me, essentially giving you free advertising. The least you could do is offer me some top-notch quality and style in exchange, right? But no, instead, I'm expecting expected to pay a premium just to do your marketing, it's insane. If I'm gonna invest that much, I want something that actually feels luxurious, not just the status symbol you're profiting from. Another thing is, when you drop thousands of dollars on a single handbag or any luxury item, you naturally assume it was made ethically, right? I mean, for that kind of price, you'd expect top-tier craftsmanship, fair wages, and responsible sourcing to be part of the package. 
Well, think again, that dream bag you've been saving for, it only costs about 53 euros to produce. Yes, Dior, I'm talking to you. And the workers behind it, they're sleeping at their workplaces, working around the clock just to make it happen. They're putting in endless hours so you can walk around with your statement piece while the brand is raking in massive profits off their sweat and struggle. How classy. When you finally discovered that the $9,000 sweater you've been saving for was actually made by underpaid workers in harsh conditions, it really makes you question everything. I'm talking about Laura Piana and its Vicuña wool products. The truth is, Vicuña wool is the world's most expensive fiber and once a year, an indigenous community who live high up in the Peruvian Andes work for the farmers, gather herds of this wool to sell exclusively to Loro Piana. The thing is, these farmers don't get enough money to pay everyone. Meanwhile, Loro Piana charges thousands for a single sweater made from this wool, positioning it as the ultimate luxury. It's almost laughable the way these brands sell us a fantasy of rarity and craftsmanship while the people behind the scenes are struggling to make ends meet. Then you see children picking jasmine flowers for a Lancome perfume everyone loves and buys. My head's starting to hurt now. And don't get me started on cultural appropriation, Loewe loves it guys. Its spring-summer 2018 collection included certain patterns traditionally made by Ecuador's indigenous craftspeople. I mean, you can't deny that these two are almost identical, right? On the left, we have Orovalo Weaver's hard work, and on the right, we have the luxurious version. If you're wondering, no, there was no credit mentioned, at least until it got exposed. What I'm really trying to say is this. If this is what luxury is, I'm done. And at this point, nobody can convince me that these brands I mentioned are true luxury. I'm not here to get tricked into paying insane prices just to feel like a joke. And I definitely don't want anyone being exploited just so I can feel fancy. It's not worth it. But now, I'm curious about your point of view. Do you think there's a way of justifying these actions or not? Let's discuss in the comments below. If you made it this far, then let me know by leaving a star emoji. Then you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you guys soon.